Hi, this is Jason King from 3dprinthq.com and I'd just like to give you a brief explanation of this 3D printing cost calculator which I put on my website a little while ago and it's it's free to use 24 hours a day uh, it should always be there online so feel free to use it as and when you like okay we've got a few different fields here which are going to take a little bit of explaining so I'm going to go through them one by one and how they affect the print, the 3D print that you're actually making. So what we have got is some help if you hover over each item, which does give you a brief explanation and should help you a little bit when you get to use it, when you come to use it yourself. But I'm just going to show you what these values actually are. So we've got the weight of the object in grams. Now some people have asked me um, will I include rafts and supports into these calculations? Well, the weight of the object generally does include rafts and supports as well. So you weigh the object after you've printed it before and before you remove the rafts and supports. So this does make the assumption that the rafts and well the rafts normally will be of the same material, but support material is going the support material that you use is going to be the same material or at least the same cost as uh, the item itself so just weigh the item when you're finished with the supports and rafts and put the value in grams in here so say this is 10 grams rather than 100 let's just reduce so we're reducing the weight of it significantly so when we hit calculate total cost you'd expect this value to drop quite a bit and it does so just go back to 100 grams Okay, we've also got the printing time, which is obviously going to affect um, the cost of the item. Largely, I mean, it affects the the printing time affects things like the electricity usage and the depreciation of the printer. But the largest impact of the printing time is on the filament used as well. So, say we've got, say we up that, double it to ten hours. Then obviously the price would go up as expected. So I'll put that back to five as it was before. Now, one of the main questions that people ask me about the cost of 3D printing is the electricity costs. So in my blog post that I, that I wrote um, that goes alongside this cost calculator, we'll talk about that in a bit, I wanted to address this. So I actually bought a power meter to work out the electricity costs. And to be honest, I think I worked out that the cost of the power meter would be co more, the cost of the power meter to me would cost more than the electricity to run the printer for the next four years or something like that. So what I'm trying to say is that the cost of electricity is actually almost negligible. A lot of people worry about it because you've got the fans running, the stepper motors, the heater, but the power usage is actually minimal. So you can, I've put this value in here for completeness, completeness and if you want to get this value, people have asked me where they can find this. You can find it on your electricity bill normally. It'll have the day, the day tariff and the night tariff. The night tariff in the UK at least is roughly half the daytime tariff. But to be honest, at 50 watts, which is what my the average that my MakerBot Replicator 2 used, I wouldn't worry too much about electricity costs. So I wouldn't worry about these two two values too much for a standard desktop FDM printer because say you use 100 watts instead then the cost goes up by, was that 4 pence I think? I'm not too sure, let's try let's go back, so it's 6.57 yeah, so if your printer uses double the electricity it's going to cost you 4 pence more for a 5 hour print so just bear that in mind okay so there's a the wattage, there's the electricity tariff We've now got this is a significant this will make a significant difference to the cost of your print um, along with the weight of the object the actual filament cost per kilogram is going to make a significant difference as well so this is I think the value here I've, I've used is what my color fab um, filament costs but I think you should yeah as I've got there you should include shipping as well so the overall cost of the filament so say the filament goes up to, you know, really expensive filament here. It significantly affects the cost of the print. So 
that's quite a simple one, I think. Okay, so what we've got here is the printer purchase cost. And you might be thinking, well, why does that really matter? What does it matter what I paid for the printer? And it's because for some of these calculations, I've used the printer depreciation. So obviously, the hours that you'll be using the printer for in its entire expected lifetime, you've got to factor that in because that's going to come into the, that's going to affect the cost of your 3D prints. So what I've got here, um, that was the cost of my MakerBot Replicator 2. So the, the default values are, are the values that are applicable to me. Um, the printer lifetime in years, I expect to have this printer for five years. It may be more, but you've got to put some kind of estimate in there. And the daily usage. And you might think, why does the daily usage um, affect the cost of an individual print? Well, it does, because if you multiply the daily usage by the time you expect to have owned the printer in years, then you'll, you'll be able to work out the hours that you're going to be using that printer for. So, say, use the printer for three hours instead. Let's just go back to that. So we've got the default values. If you use the printer for three hours instead, you would expect the cost to be a little bit less because you're getting more hours out of you. You're expecting to get more hours out of your printer. So the hours it took to create that individual 3D print is a significant, is a, has a less significant impact on the cost, if that makes sense. So this is just, these three values are just depreciation costs of your printer, which a lot of cost calculators out there don't even consider such things. Okay, something else to consider is repair costs. Because obviously your printer is going to break down sometimes, you're going to have to repair it, that's not free. You have to factor that in in the cost of every print, every 3D print. So just for argument's sake, let's go back to default values. I've put 10% in there, so I guess if my printer costs me £1,500, then the average, I guess the expected repair cost for me for the five year lifetime is £150 now. You can change this value, I'm not too sure. I think that may be a bit of an overestimate now, but obviously you can change this value to whatever you expect. And it doesn't have a massive impact on the um, the overall total, so if you get it slightly wrong, I wouldn't worry about that too much. And then of course we've got other costs, because, I'm gonna give some examples here, you've got your consumables and, your, and the value of your own time. And when, and when I talk about consumables, I'm talking about um, maybe blue painter tape that you use on the build plate or you know you might use modeling knives or sandpaper or you might use dry brushing to finish your prints or this, this stuff like that you could you, you might buy some paint to paint these things whatever you use just factor that in as well and add a little bit for each print I mean it's fairly fairly negligible but it's a, it is a cost and it needs to be factored in there Especially if you do some elaborate finishing costs on your prints, and that is a significant uh, has may have a significant impact on the on the final cost of the print. So we've got the failure rate as well, because not all three D prints um, are a success. So I factor this in. This is a percentage. So if ten percent of the time your three D print fails, then that's what you should put in here and it will factor this in so if you never get any failures for example um, calculate costs then that's what it costs you per print for per 100 gram five hour print that's what it would cost me 10% of my jobs fail it goes up to that because you've got to factor in those failures now what you've got to consider here and this may take a little bit of explaining is that this percentage is the percentage of jobs which will fail and what I mean by that is if I put a 10% if I put 10% in here rather than zero that value will go up by approximately 10% but if you put 100% in there you might be thinking well 100% failure this cost is going to be infinite because you're never going to get anything done it's just going to cost an absolute fortune but it doesn't because that what that value actually means is that all all of your jobs will fail on an average of, it's assuming one failure per job. 
So what this means, if all of your jobs fail once, then you're going to be printing everything twice and your costs are going to pretty much double. If that makes sense. So 100% failure rate here means that 100% of you expect all of your jobs to fail once. Not all of your jobs to fail 100% of the time every and every reprint to fail. So just bear that in mind. And again, it has, doesn't have a massive impact on the overall um, cost, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got, I've explained all the um, fields. What you've got to consider as well is this little, I think you've worked out by now that this calculates the cost, having changed the value. Hit that button and the total cost changes. Um, you may have worked out that this reset to defaults will actually reset to the values that I um, put in originally, which I think are reasonable values for most people. And the reason I've got this button is if you're messing around with this and you put, and you get to a point where oh, I can't remember what that was, or and you get and it's like you mess all the values up with your experiment, and you think, oh my god, what's going on here? You could get yourself into a bit of a pickle and never quite recover from it. So I've got this. It's basically a it's a save button. It's to save you from messing things up completely. Press that, and you're back to some reasonable values. So what um, I've incorporated into this as well is, for example, say you've got your own electricity tariff, tariff and it's that. You don't want to have to input that every time you visit this website. If you want to use this um, cost calculator on a regular basis, you don't want to have to re-input this. So what this does, it will remember that between visits. So remember that two five six eight. Let's just put an easy number to remember. One two three four 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 four. Okay, and you calculate the costs, and it will remember that now. So if I reload this website, pretend we've just gone away and come back, it will use cookies to remember that value. So if you revisit this website, it will remember your old values, so you don't have to put them all in or try and write them down or remember them or anything like that. So that's pretty good. Um, for any further help, if you scroll down here, I wrote a blog post about it, and I'll just click on that here. I wrote a blog post about the costs of um, 3D printing using a desktop printer. And it, it actually turned out to be the most popular blog post I've ever written. So it explains the fields as well, explains some of these calculations. Um, filament cost as you can see, printer depreciation, I think you get the gist of it and I use the values, I use the default values in the calculator to sort of give an explanation around those values and then obviously you click on this and there's a link to the actual calculator so, so if you need any more help you can go to that blog post which is linked from the page itself um, Okay, so obviously if you've got any suggestions for improvements, you can contact me uh, at any time, not a problem. So we've got the contact me here. Obviously the video is going to be, the video I'm creating now is going to be on this page, but I can't put that on there until I've created the video. So this is going to, the, the page you'll, you see will look slightly different to what you're seeing here, but the cost calculator uh, itself will be pretty much the same. Now what you may have noticed down here I've got this section called sending you the spreadsheet what this is to create these calculations it took you can imagine quite a bit of work quite a bit of research into you know to the uh, electricity cost stuff like that using the power meter connected to my printer and everything so I actually used a spreadsheet to work out the, the calculations and the formulas uh, for generating this so that spreadsheet I do have it available and I can show you here so what we've got is the same you remember that figure there that's the total that we've got on the cost calculator um, web app that we've just been looking at so we've got the fields in yellow if you look at the key down here are the changeable fields so these are the fields that you can change that we've just described on the application itself on the online um, cost calculator and then we've got some extra calculations here, which are hidden on the on the actual cost calculator, the online version. 
this is sort of the kind of intermediate calculations that I've used in the spreadsheet between these values and the final value. So if you look at those, and obviously the grey cells are just text and are not really changeable. So this is the spreadsheet that I used. Um, it's quite it's quite flexible. So if you've got your hands on this spreadsheet, you'll be able to change it. Um, if you've got your own or you're starting your own 3D printing business, you'll be able to incorporate this into your calculations and have different cells and fields with your, your own stuff in there. And you can even manipulate, change these calculations yourself, some of these, um, for your own purposes. So if I just go back to the website, you can actually get your hands on this spreadsheet by clicking this button. Click the uh, Grab My Cost Spreadsheet button. I will send you that immediately, but I do ask for a small contribution because obviously I've created all this for free. It's available for free, 24 hours a day. You can always use this. This will never, I'll never, I don't ever plan to charge for this um, cost calculator. Otherwise, I'd have to put a field in here for the cost of the using the calculator itself, and I won't be doing that. So don't worry about that. But if you want to get your hands, if you start on on this spreadsheet, if you're starting your own 3D printing business, or you you you're considering starting one, or you just want to know how I calculated these values, because obviously you know what I've done here, but you don't know exactly how I've done these calculations and how using these numbers we arrive at this value. Uh, that's all in the spreadsheet, and that's too a little too complicated for me to explain right now. So that's all in the spreadsheet. If you want to get your hands on that. Just click on that. In fact, I'll do it now. Here we go. I asked for a small contribution for that. It's not a lot. This this may change. Sometimes it goes up and down, you know, depending on demand and stuff. So if you want to get your hands on the spreadsheet, feel free to click there. Um, and I'll send it you immediately. Okay, thanks for thanks for listening. Uh just remember you can use this application for free anytime. And it's available, if I just slide this up here, at 3dprinthq.com forward slash cost. Thank you very much.